The Paracanthurus hepatis, sometimes known as the blue ting fish, is a little, adorable fish. The blue ting fish may get extremely big, adults often reach lengths of 12 inches, 30 centimeters, and weights of 21 ounces, 600 grams. Although most people wouldn't be able to identify a blue ting only by its name, they would almost likely be able to if they saw one. The blue ting has long been a regular tenant of aquariums all throughout the world, despite being made more well known by Finding Nemo. Let's investigate the blue ting further to see what all the hoopla is about. 1. There are several names for the blue ting fish. The most popular name for the Paracanthurus hepatis is the blue tang, although it's by no means the only one. The reason this specific species is occasionally called the palate surgeon fish, the blue surgeon fish, the doctor fish, and the flagdail surgeon fish is because it is really a member of the family of fish known as the surgeon fish. The blue tang also goes by the names regal blue tang, Pacific blue tang, and even latter six fish. 2. The blue ting is a different species of fish that exists. And we must confess, they do resemble one another somewhat. Scientifically known as the Acanthurus cuorulius, this other blue ting is only found on the other side of the globe as the Paracanthurus hepatis. Other names for this blue ting include the blue doctor and the Atlantic blue tang, the latter of which is much less difficult to pronounce. While this blue tang may often be found anywhere along the east coast of the Americas between New York and Brazil, it also dwells on tropical reefs in the Pacific. 3. Disney and Pixar made the blue tang iconic. As we've already established, most people wouldn't be able to identify a blue tang just by its name. Instead, they would remember the fish from its fictional counterpart, Dory. Marlin's adorable but somewhat hopeless buddy in the popular 2003 animated film Finding Nemo. As far as we know, the blue ting does not suffer from short-term memory loss, unlike Dory. Finding Dory, the Finding Nemo sequel, was released in 2016, and it features Dory as the main character. Dory was such a beloved character and an essential element of the Finding Nemo tale. 4. The blue tang's color isn't constant. The blue tang fish in Finding Dory are not often such a vivid blue hue, which is something Pixar really misjudged. In the movie, Dory is shown as a little child who resembles a miniature, cuddly version of her adult self. Although young blue tangs have adorable blue-tipped fins, they are actually brilliant yellow in color. Depending on their mood, Adult blue tangs can also slightly alter their color. For instance, a worried adult blue tang's color shifts to a deeper violet shade. 5. Without fish like the blue tang, reefs would perish. Since they eat primarily plants, this fish is an essential component of the coral reef ecosystem. Fish like the blue ting often feed on algae and plankton, whereas many other reef species eat fish lower on the food chain. This is crucial because if they didn't, the algae that they consume would grow out of control and eventually kill the coral. 6. The Friendly Nature of the Blue Tangs One thing that both Finding Nemo and Finding Dory got right is that the blue ting really enjoys hanging out with other fish. Although they are typically found alone or in pairs, schools of up to 12 fish are also sometimes seen. They don't only hang out with people of their type. They are known to socialize with other ting species and surgeon fish, although they are not frequently observed making friends with clownfish. 7. Blue tangs cannot be bred in captivity. The few remaining wild clownfish raised a lot of anxiety in the years after the publication of Finding Nemo. Ironically, the movie dramatically raised the market for clownfish, which led to a popular practice of catching them in the wild illegally to meet the demand. Since clownfish can often be reproduced in captivity, 
the impact was minimal. Once again, environmentalists were worried that an increase in blue tang ownership would follow the release of Finding Dory. The issue here is that because blue tangs are unable to reproduce in captivity, every single one of them that can be found in aquariums around the world was rescued from the wild. Thankfully, there was no significant increase in blue tang catch during the film. 8. No matter how hungry you are, avoid attempting to devour a blue tang. In any case, you'd have to be quite hungry to consider a blue tang to be a nice fish to eat. Although they are fairly tall and lengthy, they are also exceedingly slender, making them almost all bone. They are frequently venomous, which only serves to worsen the situation, or make it better for blue tangs. People who recently had blue tang flesh have reportedly experienced ciguatera poisoning, which can cause symptoms including headaches, nausea, dizziness, diarrhea, and even hallucinations. However, the fish themselves are not harmful by nature. The toxin-producing dinoflagellates are a form of tiny plankton. 9. Blue tangs may be quite hazardous. They may not do major harm to people, but they will make you regret ever tampering with them. The razor-sharp barbs that protrude near the fish's tail give the surgeon fish family, of which blue tangs are a member, its name. When threatened, it will whip its tail from side to side, gravely hurting any adjacent fish. 